Today we will discuss both Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Let us take a look at another experiment performed by Faraday. Here instead of a magnet, we have another coil C2 that is connected to a battery. See we have two coils over here C1 and C2. Let's just draw this quickly. Okay, now we have a coil over here C2. See, I'll just draw this coil. This is a coil C2 and this is connected to a source of current. This is connected to a battery. So, this is the negative and the positive terminal. So, which means that current flows in this direction. So, now if you look at the coil, you have a current through the coil which is in this direction. Now, if the current in the coil is in this direction, the magnetic field will be in this direction through the coil. So, let me just erase this. Okay, now when we are looking from this from this side, since the current in the coil is in the clockwise direction, see the current at this end goes like this, which is in the clockwise direction. So, this end is going to be like a south pole and the other end is going to be like a north pole, which means if we draw the magnetic field through this current carrying coil, the magnetic field through this current carrying coil will look like this. And this is the direction of the magnetic field through this coil. Now, we have a second coil which is placed over here close to the first coil and this is the second coil which is placed here which is similarly wound and this coil does not have any source of current connected to it. We just have a galvanometer connected to it which can detect the flow of current if any through this coil. Now, what we notice is that when the current through the first coil is rising, which means when it is changing and the magnetic field through this coil is linked with the second coil, it passes the magnetic field of the first coil passes through the second coil and while the current is growing, which means it is changing, this magnetic field through the second coil, which we call C1, is also changing. The changing magnetic flux through the coil C1 results in an induced EMF which causes a current to flow in coil C1. The direction of the current in this coil, say we mark it like this, the direction of the current in the second coil and if you notice it is opposite to that in the first coil. This is because the induced EMF is such that it opposes the cause which produces it. So, now let us look at the statement of both Faraday's law as well as Lenz's law because both put together summarize these observations of the experiment. To quickly recap the experimental observations, we can say when the current is turned on in coil C2, there is an increasing current that builds up a magnetic field around coil C2 and these field lines also pass through coil C1. As this field is building up, so there is an increasing field through coil C1. Once again, as we have seen with earlier experiments, an increasing field seems to do the trick. Again, in this case too, there is an induced EMF and hence an induced current. When the current in coil C2 reaches a final steady value, the number of field lines through C1 also stop changing and the induced EMF as well as current both disappear. If there is no current in coil C2, 
then there is no changing magnetic field through coil C1 either and the magic of the induced current does not happen. Quantitatively, Faraday summarized his observations into a law which makes it easier to understand and use. Faraday's law states that, let me just write this down, the induced E is equal to minus d phi by dt where phi is the magnetic flux and E is the induced EMF and dt would represent the time interval over which the change happens. Now this means that a changing magnetic flux through a coil produces an EMN EMF in it and this EMF depends on the rate of change of the flux. If the flux changes fast the induced EMF is more. So if the flux changes fast So, if the flux changes fast, this means that d phi by dt would have a greater value. The induced EMF is more. And of course, if the flux changes slowly, the induced EMF is less. Now don't worry about that negative sign which you can see over there, we have used a negative sign just to show that the induced EMF is in a direction opposite to the cause which produces it. We will just talk about Lenz's law which will explain the reason for that negative sign. Let me just ask you a question. Now, if the number of turns in the coil is increased, say we have more turns in the coil over here and we increase the number of turns in this coil, then how would that affect the induced EMF? Yes, that is correct. Increasing the number of turns in the coil is going to increase the induced EMF minus n d phi by dt where we are assuming that now the number of turns in the coil is n. Let us take a look at this question. Loop 1 straightens out and changes into loop 2 then why is there an induced EMF in the loop? You have loop 1 over here which is uh, oddly shaped and this straightens out and changes into a circular loop. Now why is there an induced EMF in the loop? Think of the answer in terms of Faraday's law. First write down the law E is equal to minus d phi by dt where phi is the magnetic flux. The magnetic flux phi which is integral b dot dA and over here since b is constant it becomes b dot a. Now b vector dot a vector which can be written as b a cos theta where theta is the angle between the magnetic, the magnetic field and the area vector which in this case happens to be 0 degree. So the magnetic flux phi is equal to B A. Now as the area of the loop changes that means D A by D T is changing dA by dt is changing 
so now if you put this into faraday's law then e is equal to minus we have instead of the flux phi we'll put this as b a b is constant in this case so this gives us we have a negative sign because of lenz's law d a by d t now this means that if the area of the coil changes then there is an induced emf as the flux to the coil changes see other than this also note that you can have an induced emf if the strength of the field changes which means if b changes if b is different then you can have an induced emf if the angle between the coil and the magnetic field changes then too you can have the have an induced emf for that you know we can just write this as e is equal to minus d by dt b a cos theta now if any of these factors change if b changes it either increases or decreases if a changes or if theta changes in each of these cases you can have an induced emf we'll now take a look at lenz's law this is a useful law as it gives us an easy way of determining the direction of the induced current in a loop for this we look at the experiment that we saw in the beginning where we had one coil approaching the other the only thing that we'll do is we'll just take one coil in each case so that the direction of the currents are clear now lenz's law states that the direction of the induced current is such that it let me just write this and try and understand this the induced current has a direction such that the magnetic field due to it opposes the change in the magnetic flux that induces the current now taking the coil that we had in the first case see this was connected to a battery like this it was this was connected to the positive end of the battery and this was connected to the negative end of the battery so which means that we have a current flowing in the clockwise direction so this end of the coil behave like a south pole and this end over here will behave like a north pole so we have we had magnetic field lines which went in this direction now if we take a look at the second coil then once again we had this connected to a galvanometer and the galvanometer showed a deflection due to current which flowed through it in this direction now let's see how do we understand that why does this end of the loop behave like a north pole see the magnetic field through it is increasing in this direction if the magnetic field through it is increasing in this direction this will tend to attain a polarity so that the field due to this field which is induced over here is in the opposite direction so which means this has to behave like a north pole because only if it behaves like a north pole will you get a magnetic field due to the induced current in a direction opposite to the current that is producing it so according to lenz's law the direction of the induced current will be such that it opposes the cause which produces it so this end of the coil becomes like a behaves like a north pole